Come all you thirsty, come to the well and never run dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him will live. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. So good to be with you guys this morning. Let's go ahead and stand as we continue in our worship. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering As your saints bow down, as your people sing We will rise with you, lifted on your wings And the world will see that our God saves Our God saves There is In the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on us. 
Savior to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, there is hope in your name. Good morning and welcome to the church, 1548 Heights. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Justin Duncan. I'm a steward here at the, at the church. I'd like for everyone to look in front of you and there's a communications card. We want to welcome everyone this morning if you're a member here, but we really want to welcome our guests. And uh, also if you are watching online, then um, we would like to welcome you as well. On the communications card, if you can just put your name on it. And also there are prayer requests on the back. Um, we are a praying church. We get together on Wednesday evenings and pray. And if you've got prayer requests, celebrations, or anything like that, please feel free to add that. Also, we have an app, the Church at 1548 Heights. Um, find someone younger than me to ask how do you get that app. Um, after church, if you find someone under 30, they will let you know how to do that. Um, let us continue with our worship. At this time, um, our kids, ages 10 and below, are invited to go back with our amazing uh, children's ministry team uh, for our children's worship time. Um, and as they uh, go back uh, for their uh, special service time, let's go ahead and stand as we continue in worship. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. You are the life to my heart and my soul. You are the light to the darkness around me. You are the hope to the hopeless and broken. You are the only truth and the way. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. Sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. No sweeter name have I ever known. No sweeter name than the name of Jesus. You are the light to my heart and my soul. You are the light to the darkness around me. You are the hope to the hopeless and broken. You are the only truth and the way. Jesus 
my heart and my soul. You are the light to the darkness around me. You are the hope to the hopeless and broken. You are the only truth and the way. You are the light to my heart and my soul. You are the light to the darkness around me. You are the hope to the hopeless and broken. You are the only truth and the way. And all who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy. As deep cries out to deep, and we sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come. Dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy. As deep cries out to deep, and we sing holy. Whenever I was in middle school, I had a friend invite me to a church. I didn't really go to church. This was one of my first church experiences. And we were sitting in a really large assembly hall, and the preacher comes up and says that every week, he says, the presence of God is here, and no one really reacts. So he says, okay, what if I told you behind that closed door is a lion, and we're going to let it in? I never went back to that church. Um, but, but reflecting on it, I, I think I understand what the preacher was trying to say, that God is really, really powerful, and God is also really, really gracious. And sometimes it's difficult to remember that both are true. Will you pray with me? 
Holy God, we enter into your presence with love and with gratitude for the love that you show us, for the beautiful world that you have created and let us participate in, and that you let us know you. We come today to worship you, to accept your love, to accept the life of Christ that you have given to us, to accept the wisdom of your spirit, and also to learn, to learn and to know you and to share you with others. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to Um, if you go here, you know that communion or the, uh, the Lord's Supper time is uh, really special to me. And uh, in fact, it's my favorite part of the, any Sunday service. 
and, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but I, I, I also believe that the word context is important in anything that we do, any action we take, any reading that we make, uh, any talk that we, that we have. And so I also think it, it is even more specially important in spiritual matters that we consider context. So what's the spiritual context of communion? We, uh, we know several times it's mentioned in scripture, uh, do this in remembrance of me. And a lot of times I'm not sure that we, we, all, we really take that into consideration, that context, and, and understand it just exactly what we're doing right here. But we're coming together as a family to commune with one another with God and remember the gift that he gave us through his son. That bread is um, representative of his body that was broken for us. And the, the, the wine is, is representing the blood that, that shed, he shed for us. Um, and he did that to save us because we all sin and we all need saving. Um, some of us more than others. Some of us multiple times a day. So again, we gather here together at this very time in this very place, but we always have to remember that God is here with us. God is with us each and every day as long as we allow him to be in our hearts. So as we, uh, as we get ready to partake of, the, of this communion, let's stand and say uh, the Lord's Prayer together. It's on the screens. Our Father, we are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone's invited to participate. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness. New every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy is more. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, He counts not their son. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, do every morn. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Patience could wait as we constantly roam. What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath the debt we could never afford. Our 
sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more. As we give thanks for these gifts that we're able to give God in this place, let's go ahead and stand as we sing this song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, morning, church. This morning, uh, Matt and Angela are on a much-needed vacation, uh, and we pray that they will be back in a couple of weeks with us. But until such time, I'm Ann Bayless. I'm the Spiritual Life Minister here, and it's really a pleasure this morning to introduce our guest speaker and brother and his wife, Cindy. Uh, Kirk Eason, I really want to say it wrong. It's Eason, right? Kirk Eason is the Director of Development USA for the Southern Africa Bible College, SABC. After graduating, okay, from (laughs) A&M. Thank you. I knew it was coming. Kirk served um, uh, as a campus and youth minister in Kilgore, Texas, for 13 years. He went on to serve with nonprofits equipping Christians for ministry roles, such as the Austin Graduate School of Theology and Lifeline Chaplaincy. He's been with SABC since 2010, and uh, Kirk and his lovely wife, Christy, who's with us today, live in Houston, and they worship at Memorial Church of Christ, um, which is SABC's overseeing congregation. They have two married daughters and lovely grandchildren, I'm sure. Would you please welcome Kirk? Thank you, Anne. Okay. Yeah. Good morning. It is great to be with you, and uh, it's the first time I've ever received applause before speaking. You might want to hold that. That's a very faithful thing to do, a very uh, uh, hopeful thing. I always feel bad for a congregation that I go and speak at where the person who asked me to speak there is not there. It's like they... Least, unleashed me on you, and then they took off and left. So it is a pleasure to be with you, though, and I, I look forward to, uh, to sharing with you. I've already, already enjoyed the worship this morning and, and seeing some old friends and, and making some new ones. So let's go ahead and begin this morning with a prayer. If you want. Our Father God, we come before you because there is no place else to go. We know that you are God, that you are creator and sustainer, that you are the one who has worked throughout time and history to bring about our salvation in Jesus Christ, Father. We can read about that in Scripture, and we know, Father, that your hand is moving. But, Father, we also know that you have moved in our own lives and that you have sent people to us and, and brought us closer to you and taught us your word. And, Father, we thank you now for those people and the way that you have worked in our lives individually. Father, we ask that you just help us to grow in our knowledge and understanding of you, to serve you in ways that will bring glory and honor, and to watch people change and your seed produce fruit uh, 10, 50, 100 times, Father. Father, we pray for our time this morning as we open your word and look at it 
that will be challenged and encouraged and uplifted, that will walk out these doors uh, serving you with greater hope and strength and courage. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would turn to Colossians chapter 1, that's where we're going to be spending our time, particularly in verses 9 and 10. Uh, but as we begin this, I've got to tell you a story, and I'm a little hesitant. It's, it's my favorite story, but it's a joke, right? And my wife is tired of this joke. But there was a man not too long ago who was looking for a job. He couldn't find a job. He had been unemployed for quite a while, and he searched and searched and searched. And this is how old this joke is. He was looking through the newspapers at the one ads, right? This is how old the joke is. And he couldn't find a job. Finally, he saw a job listed. It said, just an address, and it said $100 a day. $100 a day, I could use that. I'm getting kind of hungry. My kids need some, some new clothes and stuff for school, so I'm going to go and look at this. And so he goes to the, to the address, and it turns out it's a circus. And he goes to the ringmaster, and he says, hey, I, I saw this ad in the paper. I want the job. The ringmaster says, well, sign here. He didn't ask what the job was. He signed there. I'll do it. Doesn't matter. $100 a day, I'll take the job. Well, it turns out that their prize gorilla had died. And they needed someone to put on a gorilla suit and get in the cage and kind of monkey around for a while. Okay, you see where this joke's going, right? The gorilla monkey around, it's goofy. Okay, so hang with me. I need a better response than that, all right? So he said every day he comes in in the morning and he puts on the gorilla suit, he gets into the cage, and he acts like a gorilla. And people are kind of, you know, eh, it's okay. But he's getting bored. Being an athletic fellow, kind of like myself, he gets in there. That's not where you're supposed to laugh. That's not where the reaction was. Should have sucked in a little more. He puts on the suit and he starts doing some things. And he's doing flips and cartwheels and he brings in a trampoline and he brings in a trapeze and people start coming from miles around to see this gorilla. And every day he comes in and he puts on the suit and at the end of the day, he collects his hundred dollars, takes off the suit and goes home. Well, it's getting towards the end of his time there and he wants to end it with a bang. And so on his last day, he gets on the trapeze and he swings as far as he can out over the lion's cage. And he swings back. And he swings over the lion's cage again and he swings back and the people are on the edge of their seat just wondering, what is this gorilla going to do? He swings over the lion's cage. He does a triple reverse flip and reaches for the bar and it's gone. Schmack on his back in the lion's cage. And he raises his head up and he looks and 15 feet away from him is this 400 pound lion. And he starts to back up slowly on his arms and elbows moving as slowly as he can. But he doesn't get far before that lion is on top of him. And he says, okay, I've got to yell. I've got to give up this, this facade. And as he does, a paw goes over his mouth and says, be quiet, man, we'll both lose our jobs. <laughs> Can you believe it? The thing about it is that man was never going to be a real gorilla, no matter how many times he put on the suit, no matter how many times he, he went in there and acted like a gorilla, he couldn't change to become a real gorilla. And the same is true for me. I can't put on the Christian suit and walk around acting like I'm a Christian and never changing the inside, never looking inwards, never, as we'll talk about this morning, growing in knowledge, seeking out the heart and will of God for my life. That man put on the gorilla suit and he collected the accolades. And that was okay. But I think ultimately when we put on a Christian suit and don't change the inside, we ultimately don't collect the accolades. Colossians chapter 1, Colossians was written to the church at Colossae by Paul. Paul had never been to Colossae. He had never met the people. Epaphras had preached the gospel in Colossae 
and came back to Paul in prison and said, this is a great group of Christians that need to know a word from you. They need to hear a word from the great apostle, right? And so Paul writes down the, the letter to the uh, Colossians. And I know you have a, a thing in your, your bulletin. I'm not used to keeping up with exactly what the, the words are, but I will, I've got them written down here. So uh, help you fill those in. So he wrote to the church at Colossae, never having met them. And I think that's kind of appropriate. I've never met most of you, right? I don't know you. You don't know me. But what would Paul say to people that he had never met? Well, we know what he says to the church at Colossians. And so let's just uh, make a deal. Paul, as far as I know, you have never met Paul yourself, right? But my guess is if Paul was told, hey, there's a great group of Christians meeting in the Heights and they need a word of encouragement, they need a word from you, what would Paul say? I think this is what he would say. So that's number one. Number two, so Paul had never met these Christians. Number two, um, you'll remember from your Bible study that when Paul prays for someone in the beginning of his letters, Really what he's doing is outlining his letter. He's saying, hey, here are the major themes I'm going to cover in this letter. So the prayer in Paul's letter is actually an overview of the letter. And matter of fact, I don't believe a sermon should give you all the answers. First of all, I'm not smart enough to give you all the answers. So here's my challenge to you. To go home today, read the book of Colossians. It won't take you long and follow these themes. See where he points out these themes throughout the rest of the book. You'll come across them over and over again. But we're just going to, to touch on them today. All right? So that's number, uh, number two. Finally, um, oh, I've already said Paul had not met. Okay. So 1 Corinthians, or Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 9, Paul says, I'm in chapter 3. And so from the day we heard about their faith, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. The first thing that Paul prays for them is that they will know God and his will, that they'll have an understanding of who God is and his will for their life. He wants them to know God. He wants them to understand. This isn't, common, this isn't unique to Colossians. This is a common theme uh, throughout Paul's writings of knowing Christ, of knowing God, of understanding who he is. And ultimately, he's going to open a fire hydrant of knowledge of who God is in the book of Colossians. But first of all, let me tell you something. I have to think every day, what am I doing to know God and his will for me better. I'm reminded of a class I took in college. I went to A&M, of course, as already pointed out. And I took a class in economics with a friend of mine. And I wanted to sit at the front of the class. My friend wanted to sit at the back. I'm a lousy learner and I don't focus well. And so I sat at the back with him. Well, within a few weeks of the class starting, it was economics, he started falling asleep in class. And I don't just mean, he, you know, he lightly slept. He was over there drooling on the table. He was asleep so bad. And I can tell you other stories about him for that, but we'll leave it at this for now. And I thought, that's crazy. He is, he's going to miss this class. He's going to do so bad in this class. Well, then a few weeks later, I started falling asleep in class. This is not the way to do college classes, okay? Just so you know, those of you that are about to go to college or thinking of it, it's not the way to do it. But it's economics is why in demand. I can read the book, it'll be fine, I'll get it. I got a D in that class. Why is that? I mean, it was, I was a business major, supply and demand, easy stuff. I should understand it. I've heard most of it before, heard it in many other classes. I should have known it, but got idea in that class because 
I wasn't actively seeking to learn and to grow in my knowledge. And that's, maybe that's okay for an economics class. It just means the D. But it's not okay in my Christian walk. And I have sometimes I find myself getting in that routine in my Christian life. Oh, I've heard this before. I've heard that before. I've been taught it in Bible school. I heard it in a sermon a few weeks ago. But I don't really think on it and meditate on it and hold it close to me and, and bring it in as part of who I am. You see, we as Christians, we don't know the scripture and know God just so we can win Bible trivia contests. Paul's going to mention that. He goes on. So the first thing Paul wants them to do is know God and his will. Then in verse 10, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. I want you to know God so you can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So that you can do Something. That's the second thing Paul wants for them. First thing is, he lays this foundation. I want you to know God. I want you to understand his will for you. And the second thing is, I want you to do something. We're not given knowledge. We're not given grace. We're not given hope. We're not given the cross and salvation simply so you and I can be saved. That's not what that's all about. That's a great blessing of it. But you and I are saved so that we can show the way for other people. Israel was the original city set on the hill that, that was supposed to bring all the world to it, to learn about God, and they didn't do it. And so they were taken down. And we were grafted in. Our job is to be that city set on a hill. That our salvation isn't just end with us, but it extends to the people around us. Look at uh, verse 27. There's a couple of ways Paul's going to say to do this. First of all, when we're talking about knowledge, is in verse 27 it says, To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory, of the mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery of God that, that they are supposed to know about is God in you, the hope of glory. Him, verse 28, we proclaim warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Paul had this knowledge of this great mystery, and so he proclaimed it to everyone to present them mature in Christ. First thing Paul wants us to do is to know. The second thing is to do. To do something. To act on that knowledge. The third thing is to bear fruit. Right? Going back to, to verse 10. Uh, starting at the beginning of verse 10. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work. Bearing fruit in every good work. Now, this might be the most important thing I say to you this morning. Okay? Here's what I want you to walk away from here if you don't know anything else. Every time you love, you serve, you speak boldly in the name of Christ. Every time. You are planting seeds that can produce fruit. Every time. You might walk away from a conversation. You might be looking at someone, praying for someone, serving someone, loving, and just go, what difference did I make? Nothing changed, but that's not the truth. That's looking with our physical eyes. Every time you serve, love, and speak, for Christ, you're planting seeds that change lives. My favorite example of this is an, as an elder at a church I met in South Texas. 
He heard that I went to the Memorial Church of Christ, and he said, oh, you go to Memorial. That's great. That congregation means more to me than anything else. I said, really? Did you grow up there? No. Oh, what did you, what, what's your connection to? He said, I went to VBS there. I said, VBS? And that's why it means more to you? He said, oh, no, look. I went to VBS there. I said, okay, so then you started going, and then your family, no, no. I went to a few activities there with the youth group. Oh, great. And so then I'm sure you came to Christ and we're baptized, right? And then it's all good. And that's why it means more to you. No. But when I got to college, somebody came to me and wanted to study the Bible. And I remembered that VBS and those youth group activities. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And he came to Christ and is now a leader in the church, right? Don't you know, when he was a kid going to VBS, those teachers, after a week long, you know it was a week long back then, said, what good did we do? What good did we do? We wore ourselves out. We didn't get any new families. We didn't get any new kids coming to church, or at least not that one. And that youth group activities and, well, this kid, I mean, we, we've invited him, we've tried to welcome him, we've, and, and he never made a decision to come to Christ. What good did we do? They planted seeds that grew. That's what we're doing. You know, I, as mentioned, I work with the Bible College in South Africa, in Southern Africa. It's outside Johannesburg. And the problem we have in South Africa is that people are receptive to the gospel. All right. Why is that a problem? Well, because if you don't have teachers and preachers and evangelists and church leaders and structures to help bring people in and help them mature, you miss out on a lot of, a lot of people. They, they go look for purpose and meaning in something else that's far away from God. And so somebody asked me, why are those students, why do they seem to be so excited about the gospel and sharing it? I said, well, because they see it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, people coming to Christ. And then just have that thirst for more knowledge. So we don't see that on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. But we've got to know that when we do speak up, when we do share, when we do love, when we do serve, we plant seeds that might not come to fruition in a week, might not bear fruit in two weeks, might not bear fruit in a month or a year. But we've got to keep planting those seeds because God does not allow his word to return to him empty-handed, right? Okay, so the third thing Paul wants is that you bear fruit. And then finally, notice at the end of, end of verse 10, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Finally, they're going to grow in knowledge. Wait a minute. That's where we started. That's where we started is, is knowing God and knowing his will. And then we added action on top of that. And then we added the seeing the fruit being born and people being changed. And, and now we're going to just circle back to growing our knowledge. Philemon chapter one, oh, of course, Philemon chapter one, there's only one chapter, but it's about verse six or seven. Paul's telling Philemon, this is incredible. He says, I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith, talking to Philemon. And in Philemon's case, it was, I pray that you will forgive Onesimus, your servant, that you will accept him back as a brother, and that you will count all debts he has against me, Paul, and not against him. That takes a lot of faith. And you can have a discussion about what Philemon and what that means. But listen to what he says. I pray that you will be active in sharing your faith. Why, Paul? Why do you want me to be active in sharing my faith? So that you will know every good thing we have in Christ. What? Do you, is there anyone in here that doesn't want to know every good thing we have in Christ? I don't see any hands being raised, right? You want to know every good thing we have in Christ. Paul says, share your faith. 
Share your faith. Is it loving, serving, forgiving, teaching, preaching, evangelizing? As you go through Colossians, you'll see that he's, he's talking about quite a few of those things. About becoming mature. About reaching out to others with your life and with your words. We want to know every good thing we have in Christ. I think I've seen people, and you've probably known people in the past, that become Christians, and they never share their faith in any way. They don't do anything. Or maybe they were at one point, and then they stop. And eventually they fade away. I think if we are active in sharing our faith, we'll continue growing in that knowledge. We can't walk away because we know every good thing we have in Christ. That's what he wants for us. He wants us to know his will. He wants us to take that knowledge and put it into action. And we're going to bear fruit when we do that. And then the rest of the fruit that comes from that, ha, we get to know more of God and who he is. So question is, what are you doing this morning to grow in your knowledge of God? Are you acting like I was in that economics class of just trying to hoping, trying to catch it by osmosis and it'll just kind of sink in. You've been here to service and you've sung the great songs and you've heard the prayers and you've taken communion and now it's just kind of, well, I just hope that does something for me. I hope that you will be active in growing your knowledge, changing from the inside out so we won't worry about not being real gorillas. We can be real Christians. May God bless you with strength and courage, wisdom and knowledge as we live this life, bringing honor to him. Thank you. Let's stand as we sing this song together. Once I was lost, wandering in darkness, no life inside, no hope inside. But he called my name and he healed my blindness, set me ablaze. Now I'm alive with his love breaking through my heart of stone. Love breathing to awake my bones. Love reaching out to save my soul. Love never gonna let me go. And now my heart so full of words, I can't hold back, no, I can't contain it, for all he's done, Jesus my Savior, I am a place, and full of things for, his love breaking through my heart of stone, love breathing to awake my bones, love reaching out to save my soul, love
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You're dismissed. So this purchased by his blood, my life is hid with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my